In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at three ways to save time and money when you're first starting out in the aquarium hobby. And I'm going to share with you my very first successful reef aquarium and what that looks like and how that setup works and what, yeah, just what that looks like. So welcome to the first live stream of 2023 and many more to come. So if you're new to the Coral Reef Talk, my name is Joey and I share my experience with my 125 gallon reef aquarium and I help you to become a better, more successful reef hobbyist by breaking down uh, the more overwhelming things in this topic or in this hobby and make them more relatable for you. So today we're taking a look at three ways to save time and money when first starting out. So how did I get into the reef aquarium hobby? So story time real quick. Um, it started uh, late 2011, 2012 um, when I was working at a small uh, copy and print center. You might have heard of it. It's called FedEx Office. And I was working overnight over there and I would work from 10 o'clock at night to 8 o'clock in the morning. And during my downtime at work or even on break, I would be on YouTube uh, just watching videos that I that I like to watch. Um, I really liked Good Mythical Morning at the time and uh, just other channels like that. And I would just surf YouTube and I would stumble across aquarium videos. Um, I enjoyed going to uh, my local public aquarium. and. So I was like, these fish are beautiful. Some of the, the most colorful fish that I've seen or that I know of are in saltwater aquariums. And then I saw corals. Well, whenever um, 7.30 came around, my shift would end and first shift would come in. And one of uh, the team members there had a saltwater tank and he had clownfish, he had a yellow tank and so i was very interested in that and we started talking um, about aquariums and what that looked like and he would give me um, articles and blog posts and some websites to check out one of the websites uh, that i used to check out a lot was wet web media um, that was back in the day i don't know if they're still making content but it was kind of like a forum slash articles. People would post, they would post up questions and the answers to people's questions and you could kind of <clears throat> get started like that. But today what we're gonna do is talk about tip number one, let's just jump right into it, is purchase used aquariums or equipment. This is one way to um, help you save time and money because a lot of the equipment um, out there maybe overwhelmingly uh, too expensive at first. Maybe you don't have the budget for it right away. And a lot of times you can get uh, this equipment used uh, from a sites like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. So that is how I got started. Um, and I, I would search uh, Craigslist and I found my very first aquarium. So this is my very first aquarium here. It is a 29 gallon question. And uh, let me know in the comments, what size was your very first aquarium or what size would you recommend if you're first starting out? Um, maybe you're a veteran in the hobby, you've been in it in a while. What would you recommend to someone who is just starting for the very first time? So that was one of the questions that I asked uh, my friend at work and he recommended a 29 gallon aquarium because it's not too small, it's not too large. Um, the thing with larger aquariums is, yes, um, they may be more stable in their water uh, parameters because it takes longer for things to, to happen in the aquarium. But with a larger aquarium, you need larger pieces of equipment, you need more lighting. Um, so the cost of that is a little bit more. So I would recommend starting with a 29 gallon aquarium. That's where I started with. And purchasing them uh, used, uh, for example, this here came with a hang on the back filter, came with the canopy uh, with the lights, a heater, the stand and a mag float cleaner as well. And 
all of that was for a hundred dollars a hundred dollars for a complete setup and you're good to go outside of getting your water your sand and your rocks uh drew says hey what's up drew welcome to the stream danielle says my dad always had a large um aquarium this is when we were growing up yes and large tanks are are great and they they are awesome um but brand new to the hobby go with something mid-sized even a 40 gallon breeder uh tank will work as well um but yeah so this is what i started with a 29 gallon tank and you can kind of see if you're watching live on the video podcast you can see in the tank there's some coral decorations there's a skull little fake coral in the front um, with rock in the background and let me see if i can share this with you here um but yeah so by use you can see this is a used return pump that i had purchased and i also purchased a trickle filter here this is the trickle filter with the bio ball media um back when i first started this is what we used and the good thing about starting um with equipment like this or or work is you're able to work your way up so as you progress in the hobby you can move on to uh better pieces of equipment and just better things as you learn um like your parameters you learn uh what fish you're keeping you learn all the things that it takes to um keep a successful reef aquarium so yeah so i use the trickle filter bio balls and a return pump so number two jumping right into number two would be uh don't be scared of diy projects um do-it-yourself projects uh, especially in the beginning um when your budget is a little tighter or you're just trying to learn things for the very first time, DIY can be your friend. Uh, absolutely, here's a DIY overflow pipe that I built. I mean, it may not look the best up front, but it's just PVC pipes um, put together in a way where one end goes inside the aquarium like a standpipe, and the water would flow down and up and around. Um, a siphon would help create that. And then I used a ball valve to adjust the flow down to the sump so you can see that sump right there just um one of the photos it's resting on some aquarium books that i was also using uh i read some of them but you know back in the day when we read books about aquariums now everything's online um but yeah so this is my first aquarium here's a little video of it we had a sand sifting goby which is pretty cool started with two clownfish um, a black oscillaris and an orange oscillaris clown and it was great it was um very this is from the very beginning you can see that there's no coralline algae or anything going on the rocks but i was learning learning how to keep fish and experimenting with what types of fish um, i could keep so buy used equipment and then don't be scared of diy projects so i've done other diy projects where i've built diy feeders so if you're looking at progressing into automatic feeders you can make your own diy filter or feeder and i'll leave a link in the description below to that video so you can go ahead and check that out later um, but there's also things like uh, DIY stand so building your own stand when you don't have the budget to build or to buy a stand you can build your own uh, some two by four and the good thing with the medium-sized tank is that again it is small enough that you don't need to spend a whole lot of money uh, building a stand for a smaller tank is very inexpensive so you you save a lot of money there But as you progress, you'll see that um, you start getting like the diatoms and the algae and, and all that stuff. So um, when you're first starting out, you have a lot of things to learn and you may not know what everything is. So after the 29 gallon, I progressed to a 75 gallon tank. And I would consider the 75 gallon um, 
my first successful reef tank. But set a goal, make a plan, and create a budget. That would be tip number three. And that's three things in one here. So you want to come up with a goal. So what you are... Um, do you want a fish only system? Do you want to grow coral? What is it that you're looking to get into right off the bat? So you can start with your goal in mind, and then that will help you create a plan on how to get to your goal. So for me, when I was working overnights at FedEx office, I would research everything. So I would be watching videos. I started watching uh, Mr. Saltwater Tank videos, uh, New York Stilo, uh, Bulk Reef Supply was making content at the time. So there were a few resources on YouTube and articles and books um, at the time for me. So uh, every single night, once I got hooked on aquariums, I was just uh, taking in all the information that I needed to. So really researching before you jump in is a way to save you time and money because if you, okay, so let's say if you, you jump in and you see that you need all this equipment and you want a large tank because it looks really, really cool. Um, you go ahead and buy the fancy protein skimmer, buy the fancy lights, the, the large tank, the custom stand, and then you set things up and a few months go by and you decide, hey, this is not for me. Well, you've just spent all that money on something that you just decided was not for you. So doing all your research, setting a goal and making a plan will help you save that money. Buying used equipment in the beginning, short term, will save you some money as you learn and grow. Um, and then doing DIY as you progress um, can really help save you time and money i believe so if you're getting value from this go ahead and hit the like button below if you're watching live um, if you have any questions drop them in the comments or if you're listening via podcast um, leave a comment as well and i will try to get to them if i can but let's take a look now if you're watching live i'm going to show you what i believe to be my first successful reef aquarium and this was um let's see started middle 2012 or in 2012 sometime um about six months or so i had the 29 gallon and then i quickly moved up to a 75 gallon and in the 75 gallon uh reef here it's a mixed reef so there's a lot of soft corals in here. There's a lot of LPS. You see um, a frog spawn in the background. Uh, there's some Duncan corals, a lot of zoanthids, a torch coral down there at the bottom. Now, all of this, um, this is probably two years of growth. So once I, once I upgraded to the 75 gallon tank, um, this explosion of growth happened in a two year period of time. So I was in the hobby, I would say, Let's see 2012 yeah 14 all the way up to 2014 um so this is the type of success uh within two years um and i started with used equipment and i started with um diy projects and things were going really really well so things in this hobby does not always have to be expensive there's a lot of equipment there's a lot of things to learn um, protein skimmer would be something that I would invest in um, later on down the road once you get a handle on things um, but yeah there's some things that you can DIY and it's no problem at all um, but lighting I would say invest in some good lighting um, invest in a protein skimmer um, and then run a mid-sized tank to start and you'll be experiencing success in no time. So once again, set a goal, make a plan and create a budget. And if you do these three things before you get started, you're on your way to a successful reef aquarium. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the comment or, or the content. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and click that like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. 
leave me a comment down below. If you have any questions at all, even after the stream or this podcast episode is over, I will try to answer all of those questions below. So if you got value today, go ahead, hit subscribe. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and then uh, click or tap the screen to watch the next video. And I'll see you in the next one.